Hello children, Peter Malloy here with my good friend Simeon. And today, Simeon, tell them where we are. In your office. In my office. So we're not at a church. We're, uh, uh, Simeon, come on down here so they can see you. We're in, it's called my office. Sometimes they call it a study because the idea is that I study here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not going to say why, but about two weeks ago that got a lot easier. Anyway, we are very excited. Sim, tell them, tell them what's coming up. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is the first day of Holy Week. In Holy Week, we do a couple of things, but the principal ones are Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday. And Easter Sunday. Those are kind of the big ones. But there's a couple other things in there. They do Stations of the Cross on Wednesdays and on uh, Holy Saturday. Uh, we do a vigil at the church. So we're going to. Holy gonna... Saturday? Holy Saturday? What? Uh, it's, uh, it's actually quite interesting. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, we, we light a fire uh, outside the church and we bring the light in as the first kind of light of, of Easter. It's, it's quite interesting service. A little bit late. I think it starts this year at 8.30 if I'm not mistaken. So it might be, um, you know, uh, bedtime issues for uh, for some of you. But a lovely service. But we'd love to have you join us. Uh, our churches, those are the churches in uh, St. Mark's Hadlow Down, which some of you can see over your play field, and uh, St. Margaret's in uh, Buxted. Uh, which is near your school, but you can't quite see it, I don't think. And then also St. Mary's here. Sim, 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 St. Mary's here, which is just over there. You can't quite see it from this window, but it's close by here. They're all going to be open again, starting on Palm Sunday. And so we would love to have you join us. And Sim, what's starting up after Palm Sunday? Um, after Easter, we're going to do something special at St. Margaret's. Do you remember? No. <laughs> we are going to start up Sunday school. I hear a lot of you children saying, I just wish I had a bit more school in my life. Uh, <laughs> so we're starting up Sunday school. And Sunday school isn't really like school. It's, it's, it's you know, we, we meet at the service and we chat a little bit. And then you, you guys go into a special space with some really nice people. And you get taught a Bible story, you do a craft. If the weather's nice, there might even be a chance to go outside and play Duck, Duck, Goose. Is, is that a uh, English game? Do you play Duck, Duck, Goose here? What? Duck, 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 Goose? Pheasant, pheasant, waterfowl? I don't know what you guys oh, do. Oh, that is. Anyway, uh, it's a lot of fun. I like Sunday school. If I weren't a priest, I'd happily teach Sunday school. Anyway, but there's lots you of... Taught Sunday school. Yo, I've taught Sunday school for a long time. I like Sunday school. Anyway, so those are starting up. So have your parents get in contact with me and to see if, if they'd like to uh, to participate in, in that because we would love to have you. Really excited about this. All right. Now, we're going to be, it's going to be a short one today. Sim, sit up, sit up, sit up. We are going to read a lesson. And this is a lesson of when Jesus got to Jerusalem. Do you remember what this is called? The Triumphal Entry. Triumphal Entry, that's right. Okay, slow down with that, and I'm going to read. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, who do you think that they were? Do you seriously not know? Who I know, but do you know? Yeah. Who were they? The Disciples. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus and his disciples. Right. So when they drew near to Jerusalem, they've been going on this road to Jerusalem, uh, to Bethpage and Bethany, those are little towns on the outskirts of Jerusalem, uh, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away, and they found a colt tied to a door outside of a street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said, Why are you doing that, untying that colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. 
And they brought the colt to Jesus, and they threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who were before them were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna is the coming of the kingdom of our Father. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. All right, put the cushion on your lap. All right, tell me a few things that stand out about this passage. Donkey. Donkey. Why do you think he was riding a donkey? This is Jesus. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He he is the uh, one who sustains all of creation. Why didn't he? Well, Jesus is is the Son of God, and he sustains uh, creation. He brought creation into being. But have you ever seen someone ride a donkey before? To be honest, no. No, usually if you see a movie, um, uh, like uh, Aragorn in uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, did he ever ride a donkey? No. What did he ride? A horse. A beautiful horse. Um, and uh, you see uh, other people, they ride these big, majestic horses. So what was different about Jesus? Because obviously it wasn't going to... He was humble, that's right. He could have gone in and said, go in and find the finest horse and uh, tell them the master needs it, and they would have sent that too. But Jesus wanted to mark that when he came into Jerusalem, he was coming in humility. He was coming in as a servant, uh, and, and so it was very different. And what about all the people? What what did they do? Um, they praised him. They praised him. The In quotation marks, expecting him to defeat the Romans for them. That's right. So do you remember um, that he was coming in for a particular feast that was about to happen in Jerusalem? Do you remember what that Passover. was? Passover. Passover. Very good. And Passover remembered when the people of Israel were liberated from what country? Egypt. Egypt. Can you sit back and sit still, Sim? Okay, stop. You sit back and sit still. And so the people there were under the, the uh, Pharaoh and the Egyptian uh, uh, um, rule. They were slaves in Egypt. And now they're people who were dominated by the Roman Empire and, and being you know forced to, to uh, pay taxes to them. They didn't have freedom, all those sorts of things. And they said, yes, this, this guy who's been going around doing uh, magic tricks, who's been healing people, who's been talking about this new kingdom coming in, he is going to set us free. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our father David. They want to restore that kind of freedom as a nation. But was Jesus going to bring in um, political freedom like that? No. What was he about to do? Uh, save them from their sins. Save them from their sins. What these people didn't realize is, is you know, as much as, as it would be an irritant to be under the rule of a foreign occupation, um, much more serious for us is that we're kind of enslaved to our sin. We find ourselves doing things that, that we ought not to do and, and things that we really don't want to do when we think about it, but we find ourselves doing it anyway. And what Jesus was going to offer was not just forgiveness for those sins, but also freedom from those sins. And so even though the people didn't realize what they were saying, he was the one who was going to bring freedom. Uh, he was the one who came in the name of the Lord. Sometimes we say things and we don't realize um, what they really mean. And we're going to see a lot of that coming up in the Easter story. Palm Sunday is the beginning of this week. If you want a palm cross, come to church on Sunday or, you know, let me know and I'll find a palm cross for you. I think we should probably make a video on that. Of making palm crosses? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It's like three hours straight of making palm <laughs> crosses. <laughs> now, I, now I need a liberator. <laughs> anyway, palm... Palm Sunday is the beginning of it, and we're going to move ahead. We're going to move ahead to Good Friday, and we're going to talk about our sin, and we're going to move ahead to Easter and talk about what a wonderful Savior we have who offered his life for us. Didn't you once try, try this thing where everyone, like step by step, like 50 people at a time in one of your old shirts? Oh, yeah, I tried to teach them how to make a cross, and wasn't that easy. <laughs> All right. We're going to pray. 
And we're going to thank God for uh, this opportunity to be together, and we're going to pray for people we know, okay? Okay, you sit still now. Put your foot down. Okay. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that uh, you came in humility, uh, coming to, to serve us by setting us free. And we pray, Lord, that we, like the people of Israel, would recognize you, that we would um, gloriously await your coming, and that we would receive you as our King. And in our prayers, we remember the NHS, we remember uh, those who are serving in, in um, uh, helping people, and we pray, Lord, your blessing upon them and that you keep them safe. We pray for those involved in the vaccine rollout. We pray, Lord, that you uh, keep them safe and we keep, uh, and keep that uh, going on. We pray for all the teachers at the school and the uh, heads of the uh, various schools and all the support staff. We pray, Lord, that you bless them through this Easter season and that uh, you give them a nice uh, rest from their labors. And finally, uh, we pray for our whole community of Buxted and Hadlow Down. We pray, Lord, that over this Easter season that people would come to see what a wonderful Savior you are. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Tim, and I'm going to invite you guys. We'll say the Lord's Prayer together to finish. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy names. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, God bless you, children. Um, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> God bless you, children, and especially you kids over at Hadlow Down. I'm really looking forward. I think I'm going to be there on Tuesday of next week, and uh, I'll see you in person. And uh, lo very much looking forward to it. And I'm going to click this really fast before S Simeon does something. Uh, and remember, be very kind to your teachers, to your parents, and to your parish priest. All of those. Wait, you're, you're the 